So welcome to this third lecture. We will continue the proof of Schur's theorem that we started yesterday. So let me remind you quickly where we stopped. So the statement of Schur's theorem is that for all n, the number of partitions into distinct parts congruent to one or two modulo three equals the number of partitions with some different conditions. So this is a, an identity of the rogers ramanujan type, as I mentioned yesterday. I always forget of n, I don't know why, <laughs> of partitions of n. Um, yeah, sorry, so lambda 1 plus lambda 2, etc., etc., of n, such that for all i, we have lambda i minus lambda i plus 1, which is at least three in general, and even at least six if both lambda i and lambda i plus one are divisible by three. Okay, so that was the statement. I had uh, put an even another set of partitions which was equinumerous to those, but as we saw yesterday, this last one was uh, more or less the same as the first one, so I'm not considering it anymore. Okay, and yesterday we wanted to do a combinatorial proof of this theorem, so we introduced a notation, actually two, but I'm also only gonna need one for today, so I, I trust you to have the other one in your notes. So we had gm of q, which was the generating function for partitions satisfying the difference conditions. And I had called those difference conditions uh, the equation star, so I'm going to keep the same notation. And such that the, the largest part. So I plus one. Yeah, so it's just, this is just the difference between two consecutive parts. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes my, <laughs> my ones are not the, the prettiest. So, um, yeah, so we, we consider the generating function for partition satisfying the difference conditions and the additional condition that the largest part of the partition has to be at most m. Okay, so then, if you remember, we did some combinatorial reasoning which consisted in singling out the first part of the partition and looking what happens to the rest to obtain three uh, recurrences on those Gs. So I, I will write them again and then we will be able to do some new stuff. So the first one was that G 3M plus one of Q is equal to G 3M of Q plus Q to the 3M plus one G 3M minus two of Q. And if you remember, so this minus this was the number of par partitions where the largest part is exactly 3M plus one. This is the generating function for this part 3M plus one, and this is the generating function for the remaining partition. And we did the same thing for all the congruence classes mod three. So we also had this second equation We have also one for G3M. Okay. Okay. And yeah, 
so our goal was to find the limit of gm when m goes to infinity. But for simplicity, we're not going to compute all of them. We just wanted to compute the limit of what, one of those three functions when m goes to infinity, which is the same thing. And yesterday, I, I thought it was most likely that 3m plus 1 was the simplest, but I had a bit of an hesitation with 3m plus 2. And actually, it's 3m plus 2 that is the simplest. But of course, if you were able to do 3m plus 1, that's also as fine. Like, you do whichever is simpler for you. OK, so for me, <laughs> my favorite is actually 3m plus 2. So let's, uh, so, we, so we want to compute the limit of uh, whoops, my infinity symbol <laughs> didn't start well. <laughs> uh, so we want to compute this limit. And to do this, we will use these three equations to try to find a larger equation, but which will only contain elements of this form, so like with only indices uh, congruent to 2 modulo 3. So that's a way to solve uh, this system. Okay, so, so we will use 1, 2, and 3 to obtain an equation on, so, I don't know, like, on this, uh, on this sequence, the sequence of G3M plus 2s. Okay, so let's look at what we have. So if we look at, yeah, at the second one, for example, so here, we have G3M plus 2, G3M minus 1. Those two are in the correct shape. But G3M plus 1, not so much, because this is 1 modulo 3. If we look at the third one, we have G3M, which we don't want to keep. But the other two are nice. Like they are 2 modulo 3. So actually, we can use equations 2 and 3 to rewrite G3M and G3M plus 1 using terms with indices only congruent to 2 modulo 3. So let's do that. And we will do the substitution in the first equation, let's say. OK, so um, yeah, maybe I'll do, it in, I'll do it in two steps, maybe. OK, so we can first substitute 2 into 1. So we express G3M plus 1 as this uh, minus this. So, oops. OK, so we get um, so G3M plus 2. I'm probably going to be a bit lazy and don't, not write the cues between the parentheses again. I hope you don't, don't mind. Uh, so we have. G3M plus 2 minus Q to the 3M plus 2, G3M minus 1, which is now here. And the rest, so we, we keep as it is so far. So we have G3M plus Q to the 3M plus 1, G3M minus 2. So now everything except this 3M is within this is congruent to 2 modulo 3. So, hmm? oh, that's also one modulo three. You are completely right. Sorry. Okay. So, very good, <laughs> very good remark. So, we will substitute two again, but uh, after replacing um, m by m minus one. So that's a very good remark, indeed. So this one is not good yet. Okay. So, so now let's. I don't know. I will call that. Uh, I don't know. One prime. <laughs> So now we substitute, uh, so 2, where m is replaced by m minus 1, into 1 prime. So, and we'll get like 1 prime prime, <laughs> which will be equal to, uh, and actually maybe I'm going to do the two steps at the same time, because it's not the most interesting. So we also substitute the, 
the G3M that I wanted to substitute. Okay, so we do both at the same time. So we do, oh, so this is together. So we obtain, uh, how will I call it? Well, I will call it rec, just like a recurrence equation because we will get our main equation right now. So we get, uh, so G3M plus two, that was correct. Minus Q to the three M plus two, G three M minus one equal, so G three M, we said this is G three M minus one plus Q to the three M, G three M minus four. And this one, we use two again. So we get plus Q to the three M plus one times, um, okay, so we will get G3M minus one minus Q to the three M minus one, which will come from here. And this is times G to the three M minus four. So this is the equation. And I'm just gonna like factorize it a little bit so that it's, it looks nicer. So this is the same as G three M plus two equals one plus Q to the three M plus one plus Q to the three M plus two. Uh, that should be everything times G three M minus one plus uh, Q to the three M times one minus Q to the three M times G three M minus four. Does everyone agree with this? Yeah, it's good to check me if I, <laughs> if I forgot anything. Okay, so, but I think this is more or less the shape uh, I have in my memory, so that sounds good. Okay, so here we are happy in some sense because at least we have really a recurrence that involves only one sequence, the sequence of the G three M plus twos. Whereas before it was more like a, a system of recurrences. So we have converted it into a big recurrence. So yeah, I don't know how good you are at solving recurrences in general, but if I just look at it like that, it's not super obvious to me how to solve that. So what I will want to do is make some changes of uh, well, not really changes of variables, but more like changes of unknown functions, as you will see right now. And what I will also want to do is to switch between recurrences like this and something called Q difference equations that we will see right now on their generating functions. So we'll do all this, but before that, I still need for, uh, if we want this to be well-defined, of course, we need a recurrence, but we also need some initial values. So to do that, we can just look at the first, um, at the first partitions that satisfy our difference conditions and count how many of them there are. So maybe let me just do that. Okay. So we we'll always consider that the empty partition is a partition that satisfy those difference conditions. Um, of course, you can also have uh, the part, just a part equal to one or just a part equal to two. So these are all the partitions that you can form with the integers from which are at most two. So the generating, fun the generating function G2 would just be one for the empty partition, plus Q for this one, plus two, uh, sorry, plus Q squared for this other one. And I can go up to five to get the, the next one. But what I can also do is also, like, if you want just for uh, easier notation, you can also fix some uh, virtual value for uh, Q minus one which if you plug it in this gives the correct value for uh, five. So I don't know, doesn't matter, but 
maybe I, could, I can still continue writing the, the first possibility. So you can also have just a three. You can have just a four, but you can have also just a four plus one. You can have five. You can have five plus one. And you can have five plus two. So that G5 would be one plus Q plus Q squared plus uh, Q to the four plus Q. Uh, yeah, so two Q to the five because there are two possibilities to partition five. And plus Q to the six plus Q to the seven. Q cubed. Q cubed, I forgot it. Oh yeah, you're right, thank you. Yeah, okay, so I forgot this one. Thank you very much. But as I said, because this is a bit uh, long and annoying to write, you can also just take uh, G minus one to be equal to one. And then I leave as an exercise for you to just check that it's if you plug this into this equation and this one also, you get the right value for G5. So I will prefer using that because it's a bit more simple. <laughs> we would all agree. It's nicer to have one as an initial condition than this bigger thing. Okay, so, um, okay. so now we have two initial conditions, even three actually, but, and this is a recurrence of order two. So our functions uh, G3 M plus two are completely and fully defined. So this is good. And um, let me check the time quickly. Okay, so actually, yeah, so I, want, I said I wanted to convert this into a Q difference equation. So yeah, so actually maybe just for the purpose of understanding my method, we will do some, we'll try to do something and it will not work too well, okay? So you write it or, you're, or you don't write it, but at least you, you listen to it and that's, that's what matters. So we want, so this is true actually, so we want to convert this, uh, this recurrence equation on G3M plus two into a Q difference equation. So we, you will see right now what it is if you haven't heard of them. On its generating function. So let's call it, uh, I don't know, little g, little g of x, which would be the sum for x like that of uh, g to the three um, so actually I'm going to take 3m minus 1 just to get the, the simpler <laughs> initial condition. Uh, but that doesn't change anything, x to the n. So we, instead of just studying this sequence, you want to, do, to study this generating function. We have done that before. Except that now our sequence is already a generating function, but that's okay. You can do, like, you can do several variables and everything. Is this sum over n or x? Oh, yeah, n, sorry. Indeed, n. Okay, so in theory, we, want, we would want to do that. So we'll try doing that here and convert this into an equation for G. Okay, so that's, so far that will be possible. So to do that, we will want to multiply all of this by, here it will be, oh, why, why do I put an, an, it's an M, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so it, of course it should be the same variable. <laughs> yeah. So if we want to find this generating function here, you can multiply all of this by x to here the m plus one because I had this little shift and you sum over all m, right? So, okay, we can try doing that. That's no problem. So you can do, so we have the sum for m of g 3 m plus two uh, x to the m plus one. Um, or actually, no, I'm a bit, it doesn't change anything in theory, but I prefer just in practice. I will actually replace m by m minus one in this equation. I find it a bit more, more convenient, otherwise I will have to start my indices somewhere else than zero, so I don't want to do that. 
Okay, so I promise I won't change it anymore. <laughs> so then we have um, the sum of like g three m minus one, no, three m minus four times x m uh, plus. So all my sums are for m at least zero plus also the sum of uh, here we will have. Uh, Q to the three m minus two, x to the m g three m minus four, plus I take them separately on purpose so that it's a bit easier to convert into g's after that. Otherwise, of course, I could just have kept it factorized like that, but I prefer like that. Um, so now, yeah, Q to the three m minus one g 3m minus 4, x to the m, and we still have the last two to do. So we will have um, sum of q to the 3m, g 3m minus uh, 7, x to the m, and the last one, which would be q to the 6m, g 3m minus 7, x to the m as well. Okay, so very well. Uh, I will put that up. And actually, I will continue here because we are, <laughs> we are closer. I'm not sure I will see from there. Okay, so here we have exactly g of x. Okay, why not? Here, we don't have exactly g of x, but if we take one x out, we would have the sum of g 3m minus 4, x to the min m minus 1, and that would be um, g of, uh, so x times g of x. So we can do that. Okay. Now let's go here. Here is a bit more interesting. So you get, you can still take uh, one x out, but then you would have um, here you have a q to the 3m minus 2. So you could also say that this is uh, x times x to the m minus 1 times q to the 3m minus 3 plus 1. So you, this would be uh, xq times g of xq3. Okay? And for this one, we can do exactly the same, except that the power here was uh, uh, q to the three um, m minus one. So we get x q squared g of x q to the third again. And uh, yes, so here we would need to get two times the x out. So that would be q to the three m minus six plus six. So that would be plus q to the 6 times, uh, uh, sorry, g of x q 3, yet again. And for the very last one, here you have uh, q to the 6 m. So again, you can take two of those x's out. And this is like, um, that would give us q to the 12, I would think, times g of xq to the 6. And uh, so I'm, oh, la, la, I'm missing the x's. Yeah, I had to take some x out, so I forgot an x here, I'm sorry. And I forgot, oh no, actually I forgot an x squared here, and I forgot an x squared here. So this is the q difference equations that corresponds to this recurrence equation. So you can go from one to the other, and they are equivalent. Of course, you should, you, could also, you should also need some initial conditions to that. So you can, here, the equation is of order two because it depends on g of x, g of x q3, and g of x q6. So you would need two, two initial conditions. So for example, you can have uh, the value of uh, g in zero as initial condition, and the value of the derivative of g at uh, x equals zero. 
and that would give uh, that would also completely determine the function g. Uh, this is called Q difference equations because it's a bit similar in spirit to a difference equation. And if you do some, if you do, if you multiply by something and let Q go to one, then you can turn this into an actual uh, difference equation. Yes. No. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Indeed. That's that's wrong. It's um, it comes from the parameter inside. Okay. Uh, can you explain why that means? Oh, that's just a, a definition. There is nothing to to explain. Like, uh, um, yeah. This is just a function that relates g of x, g of x q to the third, and g of x q to the sixth. So that's free. I mean, I don't know how to explain a, de a definition because it's just a, <laughs> a definition. Yeah, but so that's what you call the order of a Q-difference yeah. equation. But you said you needed like two initial conditions, and that yeah. also what? Yeah, that's because it's of order two. It's just like, just imagine a difference equation of order two. Then you would need two, two initial conditions. A recurrence of order two, you need two initial conditions. So it's yeah, the same idea. Yes? I think last time was a minus sign point. Yes, you are right, but I forgot it here already. So thank you very much. Yes, so it's a minus and it's a minus. Thank you. Okay. So, so yeah, so this is just a, another way of writing this. And so I said I was going to do something wrong. Well, I did some <laughs> typo, but that's another problem. But what I did, it's not that it's wrong, uh, like mathematically it's correct, but by doing that, we didn't gain much information because as I said, these two things are equivalent and we started like, yeah, with a, we started with a recurrence of order two and we got a Q difference equation of order two and they are both more or less of the same uh, difficulty if you want to solve them. But actually, do you notice why we got here something with actually, which, which is actually of order two, which means that actually we have some terms in x q to the six. So that happens because here we had a q to the six m. So actually, when you convert a recurrence to a q difference equation, it is the maximal power of q that will give you the order of your Q difference equation. So here, because we had some Q to the 6M, we have something of order two. And maybe that, that might be what you have thought of initially, Walter. If you wanted to convert this into a recurrence equation, then the order of the recurrence equation is indeed the largest power of X that you can find in this equation. So maybe that's where the confusion came from. I don't know. but. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay, so let's look again at this equation. So here you see, in this term, it goes up to Q to the three M plus some constant, but we don't care about the constant. It's the, the what, you, what you have in front of the M that matters. So okay, so here you have three M. On the left, you don't have anything. And here you have, well, at, the, at worst, uh, Q to the six M, which comes from this times this. But as you can see, this equation is a bit unbalanced because here you don't have anything and here you have a big power. So actually what we are gonna do is that we are gonna make some change of uh, unknown function here and try to choose it in a clever way so that this factor will disappear and that something will appear here in its place. So that then we would have the powers of Q up to 3m plus constant here, here, and there, okay? So that's our goal. So let me just check because I don't want to do anything. So let's do, um, okay, so here I can just write, uh, yeah. We are not too happy because this is a Q difference equation of 
order two. And we don't know how to solve that directly. Okay, so if we managed to do what I just said, we would have Q to the three M everywhere. So that would give us, when we try to convert, actually a Q difference equation of order one, which we usually know how to solve. So let's do that. So, so we want a Q difference equation of order one. So we will do a change of unknown function. So change of, well, or it's actually a sequence more of unknown sequence in our, in our equation rec. So we will call, we'll call it SM. Yeah, that's just, you pick whatever name you like. And this will be G3M minus one divided by Q3, Q3 sub M. Okay, and we pick it on purpose so that we want to cancel this term here and make it appear there, okay? So we'll do that right now. Okay, I don't need that and I can check the time at the same time, so that's cool. Okay, so, um, so we will just do that in here. We will try to replace uh, the G's by uh, SM times this and we will see if things cancel out, as we hope. So, okay. So this, if we do the substitution in, in this equation rec, we will get, um, so on the left hand side, we will get uh, SM plus one times Q3, Q3, uh, M plus one. And on the right hand side, we will get one plus Q to the three M plus one, plus Q to the three M plus two, and uh, G three M, uh, sorry, not, not G, um, Q three, Q three M times S M. And on the right, you would get plus Q to the three M, one minus Q three M, Q three, Q three, and minus one times S M minus one. Okay, so actually, if you multiply one minus Q to the three M times Q three, Q three M minus one, then that's just the last term that you would find actually in Q three, Q three M. So this is Q three, Q three M, and I will get some color to write that. Up. Okay, so yeah, so this is Q three, Q three M. Okay, here we also have Q3, Q3M, and this one, well, it's almost Q3, Q3M, except it's multiplied by one uh, minus Q to the three M plus three. Okay, so basically we have Q3, Q3M everywhere, so we can just cancel it out. Okay, and this did exactly the trick we wanted because instead of having a factor here, we don't have it anymore, but we have it there at the beginning. So actually, uh, I heard, no, okay. I thought I heard some question. <laughs> so yeah, so we have an equation of the shapes that we want and I will just check to make sure I haven't made any mistake. Okay. So that's all good. Mm -hmm. So I'll just also, you remember here I did some shift of index before doing the converting into an equation. I will do the same. It's just for convenience. No, no big problem here. So we will do, um, so I don't know, I will call this like prime now. So we have, um, 1 minus Q to the 3M times SM, which is equal to 1 plus Q to the 3M minus 2 plus Q to the 3M minus 1 times SM minus 1 plus Q to the 3M 
Oh, that, yeah, no, that was okay, sorry. Three m minus three, now times s m minus two. Two, 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 yeah, that's the one. Very well, okay. So, so yeah, as a recurrence, it doesn't, it doesn't seem much simpler than the first one because it's still of order two and we have the same number of terms. But when we convert, you will see this is much nicer. So let's do, uh, so I will call it f this time. So f of x will be defined to be the generating function for uh, sm, xm. Okay. So we do the same thing as I did before. So we multiply everything by x to the m and we sum over uh, m. Okay, so I can, yeah, maybe I can just, oh, do I do it in, no, I don't, maybe I don't do it in detail so much, it's really the same idea, so maybe I can just, uh, yeah, do that a bit more quickly. So this time I, I don't separate things at least, let's say. So xm, One plus q to the three m minus two plus q to the three m minus one s m minus one x m plus the last one q to the three m minus three s m minus two x m again. Okay, so let's just see quickly how that gives what we want. So here we have, so if we take this one here, we have just a series of sm, xm, so that would be f of x. Here we would have uh, f of xq to the three, because yeah, you can just write it as xq three to the m. So that f of xq to the three. And here you would have, uh, for this one, you just have x times f of uh, x, if I'm, yeah, I'm correct. Then you have, um, if you still take this x out, you have here uh, q times uh, xq times f of xq3. And then you have xq squared times f of xq three again. And here, uh, here, well, that's a minus two, it's not very pretty. Up. So here you just, you have to take two x's out and you get q three times f of xq three. Okay. Yes? Maybe you mentioned it, but I was we are also using the fact that the series is zero where we don't see it. So That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, indeed, we can... Yeah, yeah, I, you're right. I, I, yeah, yeah, it's... It. Yes, it's true. So we, we just consider that S uh, minus M is zero for all M. Uh, no. you, Voilà. Greater than one, I think, because, wait. No, uh, because SM <laughs> is, uh, where did I do the change? SM is uh, G3M minus one, oh, so, three, okay, okay. yeah, S zero is one, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I didn't mention that because, yeah, I didn't want to go <laughs> into every detail, but indeed, when you do this <laughs> manipulation, if you had some terms, uh, some negative terms which are non-zero, then you can have some problems. But I wanted to <laughs> to hide that, but Karen didn't let me. <laughs> but yeah, here we are lucky; we can we can take it to be like that. So so yeah, so you can do this manipulation, and here actually we obtain an equation which is of order one. So let's just rewrite it one last time, and. I will call it just x. <laughs> like equation, so we have one minus x times 
f of x, which is equal to 1 plus x q plus, uh, actually I will factor all of this, maybe you can believe me that this works, times 1 plus x q squared times f of x q to the third. Okay, so this is the final shape of our Q difference equation. And actually here we are almost done because equations of order ones, <laughs> they are our favorites, right? So we'll just see right now. First, how we solve that, and that will be hopefully quite fast, and then how we deduce the limit for GM that we initially wanted. Okay, so, um, mm -mm. yes. So let's just rewrite this. So we have f of x, which is equal to, uh, so 1 plus xq times 1 plus xq squared divided by 1 minus x times f of xq to the third. But you can reapply the same equation by replacing x by xq to the third. Why not? So, iterating, we get that f of x is equal to, so 1 plus xq, 1 plus xq squared, so you do the same thing again, 1 plus xq to the fourth, 1 plus xq to the fifth, times f of f xq to the sixth, divided by 1 minus x, 1 minus xq to the third. And you can, you can do that infinitely many times, and you will end up with minus xq, q3 infinity, minus xq squared q3 infinity times f of zero because, well, yeah, we usually don't in those proofs care about convergence too much, but we still consider q to be less than one in module so that if you iterate, uh, like if you let n tend to infinity in q to the n, you get one. Uh, zero, sorry, zero. <laughs> Zero, of course. So, yes, and in the bottom you have x, q3, infinity. Okay, so f of zero is actually s0, and s0 is g minus one. So this is one, actually. Okay, so this is just one. Okay, so actually we have the formula for f of x. Okay, so we are almost done. And what we have to do is just use something called Appel's comparison theorem. Uh, actually, so that's what Andrews calls it. Um, I haven't seen that many other people call it that way. Or <laughs> oh. yeah, it's also yeah sometimes Abel's lemma. So, anyway, <laughs> whatever name you want to give it, it's a quite convenient lemma to, to actually do this switch between recurrences and Q difference equations because it tells you that um, if you take some sequence, a n, uh, be a sequence, uh, which has a limit, a finite limit, yeah, I don't know if in English when you say limit it means it's finite or not. When n goes to infinity, then <laughs> you have some relationship between the generating function for the ans and the limit of the ans. So we have the limit when x tends to 1 of 1 minus x times the generating function an x n, which is equal to the limit when n goes to infinity of a n. So I, I will not prove this one here, both because we don't have time and because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just analysis, and not the kind I, <laughs> I prefer. I prefer talking about partitions. So if you're interested, you can do it as an exercise, and if you don't know how to prove it, uh, you can still come to me and I will explain to you. But for now, I won't. 
And actually, we will try to apply this to our problem here. Okay, so we have, uh, let's go back to there. So we had that. Um, so now we know that, uh, maybe let's do it like that. Um, so the sum for those SMs, SM x to the M. So that's uh, one, um, sorry, wh where am I looking here? Okay, so this is f of x, and f of x we have managed to compute it. So that's all very good. And this is minus xq to the q3, minus xq, xq squared to the q, uh, q3 infinity, divided by, um, so I will write it a bit differently. So I will write one minus x to extract the first term on purpose, xq3, q3 infinity, okay? So now we can just, if we want, move this term here, actually here, one minus x, one minus x also. And now we can apply Appel's lemma here. So here, if you take the limit when x tends to infinity, uh, not infinity, uh, one, if you take the limit when x tends to one, that gives you the limit when sm uh, tends to infinity. So we take um, the limit. So, so the limit when m tends to infinity of sm is simply here when we replace x by one. So we have minus q, q3, infinity, minus q squared, q3, infinity, q3, q3, infinity. Okay, so that's quite nice. We're almost there. We just have to find g, gm again. So actually, that's also the limit when m tends to infinity of g three m minus one divided by q three q three m. So actually, you can just also let uh, m tend to infinity here in the denominator. You just get a q three q three sub infinity, and this one will cancel out with the one that's in the denominator there. Okay, so here, like this, you deduce that uh, the limit of uh, g3m minus one is uh, minus q, q square, uh, q3, sorry, infinity, minus q squared, q3, infinity, and this is exactly the generating function for partitions into distinct bars congruent to one or two modulo three. So this is exactly what we wanted. And yeah, so this proof that I just showed you, it's uh, yeah, 99% due to Andrews. I made some modifications, but that's a proof he gave in the 60s, like the end of the 60s. And he did several proofs uh, with a bit of this technique of using recurrences, uh, Q-difference equations. And it's a type of proof I also quite like because you can, you can generalize it to, to treat more complicated problems that I will show in other lectures. Do I still have five minutes to do? I, I don't remember when I started exactly, I'm sorry. I can? Okay. Because I will just add some little things on all my breadboards, and you will see that actually with this proof, you can even obtain a refinement of Schur's theorem. So where was the, the statement of the theorem was there? Okay. So here, as usual, we are happy because we proved the equality of two cardinalities of sets of partitions, but the more combinatorial information we can get, the happier we are. So now, I want to keep track, let's say, of the number of parts congruent to one on one hand and the number of parts congruent to two on the other hand. So let's just add, so with, let's say, u parts congruent to one mod three, 
and v parts congruent to 2 mod 3. Okay? And here actually, well, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna spoil the, <laughs> spoil the results because I don't want to go back and forth with all the, the blackboards, but on the other hand, it will actually be uh, u parts congruent to 1 or 0 mod 3, and v parts uh, congruent to 2 or 0 mod 3. Because here we don't have any part congruent to 0 mod 3, so of course we cannot count them, or we can count them, but they are 0. And here, yeah, you get the same thing, but you integrate those, uh, you, you put them in the, <laughs> in the problem. So let's just say that now our, our GM, they would then depend on more variables, of course, to count those U's and, uh, and V's. So that would be the generating function where, uh, so A counts, where the power of A is the number of um, U parts. So where A counts U and B counts V. Okay, so we can just do the same thing here. So I will still not write the, the parameters of our GMs, but just here we can see what, what we will change. So here actually, when we take out the first part, it's a part which is congruent to one modulo three. So that would add uh, A here. Similarly, when you take out three M plus two, that was a part congruent to two modulo three. So that would add a B. Um, and here we said uh, that when it's congruent to, um, to zero modulo three, it's counted both in U and in V, so that would add uh, AB. Okay, so then the rest is still the same. We still want to compute the limit when N tends to infinity. That doesn't change anything. So, yeah, all my computations, maybe I leave an, as an exercise to add the correct uh, A's and B's, and maybe I can just write it in the, in the final. Well, maybe I don't know how to do that without doing it everywhere, actually. So let me just do it quickly. So it's just you put some, yeah, some B when you have, um, actually, no, I don't know anymore what I'm doing. Uh, wait, I had that in my paper. That's maybe slightly safer to check. <laughs> but I don't want to, to mess up everything. Okay, so where would that be? Um, okay. A, B, Q, 3, M. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm getting a tiny bit confused. Ah, oh, yeah, so, yeah, so here there would be an A, B. Here there would be an A. Here there would be a B. Um, so here is A, B, and this is A, B. Here also you can put some A's and some B's, so I just put it here. This one we said we didn't need it if we have this one, so let's not, let's not use it. And here you can also keep the A's and the B's, obviously. But I'm not gonna do the wrong version, I will only do the correct one. And I think I then went on this blackboard, so we had... Um, okay, so here it doesn't change anything. Here we still have A, B, A, B, two, two, two. And here we have A, B, because there was an A here, a B here, and an A, B here. So actually you can really keep track of those new letters A and B in all the proof. It doesn't change anything. And you get them until the end. So here, if I go back to the very last blackboard, you have some A here, some B here. Again, A, B, A, B. Um, and then you get just, uh, where is it? Here you get some A, some B. And in the very end, you get minus A Q, Q3, minus B Q squared, Q3 minus a q q3 minus b q squared q3 in the last, uh, in our last result. And so this is 
still the generating function for partitions into distinct parts congruent to one or two modulo three. But well, now you have a different variable keeping track of the partitions uh, of the parts congruent to one modulo three, and another color for the partitions congruent to two modulo three. And so that will help to do several things. So first of all, knowing that actually parts congruent to, three, uh, to zero modulo three are, if you want to put colors, are of color AB, that could give the intuition for a bijection that you would maybe need to merge some parts colored A and some parts colored B. So we will see a bijection, not tomorrow because that's the break, but on Friday. And also this will be at the origin of the method of weighted words, which I will talk a lot more about in the next two lectures. So I will leave you here and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>